Hi, you guys. <laughs> so today I'm having some muddy mud. I call it muddy mud. It's actually American chop suey. Veganized American chop suey. It's got uh, mushroom, onion, squash, zucchini, tomato. I have some of the Upton um, Italian Satan in it. Um, peppers. And I think that's it. And then on top, I have, of course, the nutritional yeast and almond flour mixed, which makes a Parmesan, and that's my cheese. And I have my kale salad loaded up with purple cabbage and just a bunch of other stuff. Celery, you know, I don't miss anything. <laughs> I got all the vegetables in here. Let me show you, there you go. And I'm just gonna dig in, I'm hungry. <laughs> I call it muddy mud because um. I once shared a video uh, making it on my Facebook channel, right? And like, okay, I'll just pay to see what happens. Did a pay to win <clears throat> for advertising over there. And I just sent it all over this uh, various sections of the world. And someone got back to me and called it muddy mud. I'm sure it's like to be kind of like insulting. But then I thought, wow, what a great name for it. So thank you. <laughs> There's some muddy mud. Whole wheat pasta, marinara base. Nothing too difficult. Quite delicious, quite comforting. Definitely gives you a carb fix, as you can see. I'm getting down to two weeks here until I go to China. Holy crap. Oh. Wow. There is some cauliflower that's <clears throat> marinated cauliflower and whoo. It goes right down, right to my throat. Like vinegar, it's like a vinegar base. Mm. So I'm sharing today the link to the movie, The Game Changers, which is out in theaters now. And what you will find in this community, I wish it, there wasn't a vegan community. I wish you just call it like a nutritionist, nutrition community. But we'll say vegan. Is that people aren't doing this stuff for money. Believe me, this is not popular. This is not a money-making industry right now. <laughs> so for them to offer it for free on YouTube, well, I think that's amazeballs. So, the link is below. It'll take an hour and 25 minutes of your precious time. But it's from an athlete's perspective, so, you know, it's very straightforward. Very, this is what I ate, and this is how it changed my performance. Straight up. Isn't this colorful? Yeah. So, check out that link, it's below. Mmm.
So some of the things I'm getting for your trip, I told you in one of my um, previous videos, I was bringing some strange stuff like puppy pads to make a road in the uh, hotel room so we don't touch the floor directly. <laughs> for a particular hotel, our first hotel. Um, we brought just really like first aid kit kind of stuff, um, large like toilet seat covers, um, because they have, because hepatitis A, I believe, and typhoid are kind of prevalent. Um, we want to make sure that we just try to maintain as um, as much of a hygienic environment as possible. <laughs> and we got our our um, filters for our faces so that I look like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Get over here! Um, and what else? But the really cool thing I got, mm-hmm. Oh, hold on. I gotta remember how I did it. How do I do it again? This? Wait a minute. Hold on. Are, the are these? I'm bringing these to China so I can show you guys exactly what I'm seeing. I still have to calibrate exactly where things are, you know, but yeah. Like I think that I'm, I was looking probably at what I see in front of me, but so far every time I've played it back, it, it isn't quite, I miss stuff that's below me. It's usually looking a bit higher than I want. So maybe I would have to do something like this. Have to do something like this. Hi. No, you're not being recorded. No, not at all. But it's going to be nice to be completely hands-free and stuff. Um, there's a sled. That goes down the wall of China. Um, that Michelle Obama went down. And I'd like to see. I'd like to do that. Or see if we can do that. So. If we had a chance to do stuff like that. Or a Tai Chi. I'm definitely wearing my new high tech glasses. I will shout. <laughs> oh. No napkin. Hmm. Hmm. This is good. Mm. 
And it's hard not to smile knowing what I'm taking in, you know, what, like the vitamins and the nutrition that I'm taking in. It's difficult not to be like, yay, me. <laughs> yay, me. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I finished my muddy mud. Mm -hmm. mm. I'll tell you what's up with this, this cheese. This is like the vegan crack right here. Right here. Nutritional yeast. It's a secret. Here's how we get our B12. Right there. See that? Quarter cup. Right there. Fortified. 780% of the daily allowance. Of B12. It's fortified. Yeah. And it's the cheese. It's the cheese for everything. I sprinkle it as is all over um, my nacho based things, like my Mexican style stuff. I mean, it's part of everything. Like, if you're making any type of cheese. Mozzarella cheeses, queso cheese. And we're gonna sound like Bubba Shrimp. <laughs> the boiled shrimp, fad shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So my wife has a potluck coming up for work. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is when they're really going to put me to the test, aren't they? Some of her coworkers have started to sample her lunch. <laughs> So I'm thinking if I were to make, if I were to make like my signature meal, um, really the one that's just like the best of the best so far, it would be falafel, not falafel, dumb, shawarma. <laughs> It would be my vegan shawarma. So I'm thinking of making that. I'm trying to think how much, how much stuff I would need though, like for say 25 people one thing a tofu makes approximately four dinners I 
I need a lot of tofu. I think the most expensive part of making falafel, vegan falafel, is uh, the tahini. So, I don't know. This could be kind of costly. <laughs> and, and our figures are having it like before we go to China when we're trying to like save our pennies, you know? <laughs> I could also do a vegan sampler. So that way I don't have to invest a lot in one particular meal. You know, like if I made, um, oh my God. If I really wanted to blow people's minds, I could make a serious Mexican casserole with the queso cheese, the nacho cheese that I make. I rarely make it because things that are not based are not part of what I'm doing to lose weight. A lot of nuts. Uh, do not help if you're losing weight. And which is kind of frustrating. I, mean, I only have it with my morning potato. I'm still having potato with my Lexi Babe Valentina, though it's not the correct Valentina according to Lexi Babe. It should be the black label one, not the orange one. <laughs> so next next time we go, when we go maybe shopping this weekend for everything that we need for this potluck. Um, I'll take you guys shopping with us again and we'll grab um, the correct Lexi Babe Valentina hot sauce. I am working on a surprise for a mukbang that I'm probably gonna do when I get back. And saying Lexi Babe reminded me of it. It might be mind blowing. Or not. <laughs> Boy. You people got Trisha, uh, Pay just going this way, that way, this way, that way. <laughs> Making that girl crazy. When she realizes that it's not you people that she needs to be making happy, she'll stop making those videos. <laughs> Well, I'm going to cover my <laughs> weekly topic, which is what the fuck is going on in an American horror story. Ah. I think I told you last time that my undergrad degree is in theater. My master's degree is in psychology. And I was going to pursue a degree in forensic psychology. I wanted to go to um, Yale. I wanted to work with Dr. Henry Lee.
not really my field of interest. So once again, I'm watching American Horror Story. And yet again, I am perplexed as to why I'm watching it. I couldn't figure out why. Obviously, no. Obviously, uh, Ryan Murphy has a thing for, like, uh, Richard Ramirez. Because this is not the first time Richard Ramirez has shown up. I believe he was also in Hotel, along with other serial killers. But why is Richard Ramirez showing up in this series at all? And, like, you're not going to find serial killers just going out and pulling a chainsaw or something in the middle of a campsite going, I am a killer! You know? At least that's not what I learned. <laughs> it's just not what they do. And now, like, told you. I told you, I told you. They're coming back to life. Now he's pissing me off. <laughs> Did you see the previews for the next episode at the end where he, <laughs> he gets pissed off? Um, I can't think of his name. I don't know his name. No need to try to think of it. I don't have it in my data, uh, in my data file. The one who played Satan in, uh, I don't know. He played the bad guy in Apocalypse. And this time he's like, you know, this aerobic instructor looking dude. Um, pretty boy hair the whole bit. And he looks at the other, the other killer and says, you're the reason why I'm not going to be on the cover of the TV guide. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. <laughs> In the 80s, our aspirations were rather small. <laughs> but, hey, at the time, the TV Guide was the shit. We didn't have internet yet. And that's why, you know, I've, I've, I think it's... It's not difficult to understand why people's depressions are exacerbated by where technology has gone. I mean, if we could stop for a moment and just appreciate what an entertainer had to do in order to gain the, the fame that a Judy Garland had to go, you know, had to achieve, or Jim Morrison, or I'm not going to I'm not going to include Kurt Cobain just yet <laughs> because he did have like MTV, you know, that was a big deal when MTV came out. That was huge. That was how you get to a, like a lot of people very quickly. And just kind of setting the pace of where we were going to head toward when the internet came out. Like, what? You know, now you have people who are just stars. They're, inter they're YouTuber stars. There are, I mean, the people, people of all different backgrounds can have um, fame with their websites or with social media and things like that that none of these performers back in the day had. They had to work so hard to, to bring fans in, to even imagine getting on television, um, that I can see 
becoming increasingly depressed as it becomes less of a challenge for people to become famous because of social media. Where you don't necessarily have to have a strong talent background. You just need to have whatever, a flair about you, I guess, that people like. So I can see definitely where performers of my generation, which is like Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, and all the ones who like just killed themselves with like fentanyl and other drugs. I can see where their depression got worse. Because people can do it, you know, so many times faster than they could have ever imagined for themselves in their careers. And these were superstars. I don't know that we have any super superstars today. Madonna. Madonna is quite talented. She's very, you know, I loved her in my in the eighties and stuff, you know. But she's had to work very hard at it, you know, whereas a Michael Jackson or Prince, they had this innate talent about them, you know. I don't know. That's me just shooting the shit. <laughs> but... Richard Ramirez in American Horror Story. I mean, Ryan Murphy, cut the shit already, would you? And you have him coming back to life. This better be, I don't know what this better be, but it's some sort of alien thing. I don't know where he's going to go with this. But if we did a, uh, we looked at the case study of Richard Ramirez, he's not going to be running around a campsite going, yeah! And... I think it's unlikely that he would be doing any of the shit that he's doing in American Horror Story. <laughs> but, hey, what of? All right. So that's it. Just a little chit-chat. And um, I hope you have a good meal, whatever you're having. And I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple shrimp, uh, lemon shrimp, coconut shrimp, pepper shrimp, shrimp soup, shrimp stew, shrimp salad, shrimp and potatoes, shrimp 